How's it going, everybody? This is Vanguard Badlands bringing you another Seven Mortal Sins X Tasty. And if you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoyed this content, go ahead and hit that like button, comment down below. Let me know: Are you going to be summoning on these two new characters that are currently coming, that are currently out? If so, let me know what character that you summoned for, and were you able to pull multiple dudes because you need that ultimate unlocked? And Go ahead and share this video to anybody that will enjoy Seven Mortal Sins X, X Tasty content, Ecstasy, to any community group so we can grow this channel together as a community. But alright, let's get into this. So the two new characters, this is going to be a Should You Summon video. So we're going to go from bottom to up. We got Serial the Saint. Serial the faint, the, the faint. Serial the, yeah, I was right. Serial the faint smile arrival. So, to any new players out there that are just currently joining the game, we're going to break down the old characters. So, Serial is a great character, but she's even better combined with Michael. But I believe she's pretty good by herself. Speed is a phenomenal, but her HP and attack is uh, it's questionable. So, we're going to do Soul Slash. Deals 130% attack as damage to the target and one random. Targets two times. So, you get the target. You'll hit the target twice and a random, two randoms. Wait, what? 130 attack has damage to the target and one random target two times. Probably the random twice. I'm not sure how that works. I think I'm reading that right. Inflicts soul break on the damaged target. If the target is not affected by Heart of Mercy, inflicts Heart of Mercy on it. Soul break. When a turn starts to deal 125% attack, 125% of the effects owner's attack as damage, unsackable, lasts for three turns. Heart of Mercy, attack minus 20%, lasts for one turn, unremovable to a target. It's pretty good. So minus 20% attack on a target on their next turn if they're infected with the Heart of Mercy. Oh, so this is every time. So one character will, if the character is not infected by Heart of Mercy, that character is infected by Heart of Mercy with this attack for one turn. Deals 190% attack as damage two times. <laughs> if the target is inflicted by any buffs, status, remove all buffs. From that target. Pretty good. Including unremovable buffs. After the action. Inflicts steady. On all allies. Steady. Gain immunity to move gauge. Decrease last for three turns. That's pretty good. And then we got our ultimate. Core station. I believe I'm saying that right. Deals 370% attack as damage. If the target is a strong type cast, additionally deal 250% attack as damage. So we're doing at least 610 or 620 attack as damage. If this attack defeats an enemy, reduce the move gauge of two. Enemy targets with the highest move gauge by 25%. This is really good against uh, a strength type character. Especially even better on Fuka. If, if, if you're playing PvP and they have Fuka on their team. Uh, that's pretty much... Serial is the character that you want to focus on to... To, to weaken the enemy's speed. 
After the action, we revive two defeated allies and restore 75% HP to them. It's pretty good. But remember, this is an ultimate. You have to get it off. If you don't get it off, if this character dies, then you're really just relying on these two. But great, great. Heart of uh, Mercy Watcher. Heart of Mercy. When the battle starts, reduce attack of two enemies' targets with the highest attack by 50%. Lasts for two turns. Unremovable. Air wing. All allies. Speed. 10%. Permanently. After the, after the action, increase the move gauge of all allies. Including the casters by 15%. Triggers during Serial's first three action turns. Bad appetite when the battle starts inflicts weaken on two enemy targets with the highest HP relapse for the entire battle. Un removable, it's removable. Weaken max 25% or 35% HP. Pretty good. And why I say this is good with uh, Michael is because Michael, we're going to take a look. Cast, uh, where's Michael? Uh, it would be better if I went to Solopedia. There it is. So with Michael, deal 140% attack as damage two times before the action starts. Uh, there's, uh, dealing additional strength. Where's the skill that helps a certain type of her attribute? Or is it just... Oh yeah, okay, so yeah, Michael is a... Strength type uh, focus character. So, with Serial and Michael, they go great together because they just wreck strength characters. And pretty much... Serial will focus on strength characters that are problematic, like uh, Ruruka. Michael will focus on Lucifer, and then once Fuka dies, you get to focus on Lucifer with Serial. That's why they go great together. And then we'll go on to Serial's new design. It's sexy, sexy. I like it. I love it. All right. The Faint Smile, Serial, Power Character, Meat Cleaver, you don't say, Meat Cleaver, all right here, okay, I see it, deals 140% attack as damage two times and grants the cast, the cast, one stack of Spirit Harvest after action, if there are three or more allies survive on the battlefield, include, includes Three casts while dealing attack. Pursue pursues 85% attack as damage two times on all allies and flicks. Crack down on the enemy target if the cast is inflicted by resurrection while pursuing consumes resurrections and revives two random defeated allies by 75% the cast HP. Spirit Harvest. This stat lasts for the entire battle if the cast is inflicted by four st stacks of Spirit Harvest before the action converts Spirit Harvest into Resurrection. Crackdown. Deal. Dealt damage minus 25% lasts for one turn. Pretty good. It's amazing. It's fucking fantastic. Who wants some sweets? I do. Deals 175% attack as damage two times and inflicts here comes the queen effects on the targets. If the target is a tech character, tech type, or elite, inflicts bright strike on it. Here comes the queen attack minus 25%, lasts for two turns. Spike, spirit strike when the bat, when the turn starts, deals 125% attack as damage on the target, inflicts by the status 
up to two stacks, lasts for three turns. All enemies, and this is on one enemy, but you get all these effects. Pretty good. Then Absolute Obedience. Yeah, she has the whip. Of course she can say that. Deals 370% attack as damage, targets three enemies, and it's an ultimate. As damage, remove all enemies, targets buffs, grants all allies the faint smile effect, and grants the cast resurrection. So this, oh my god. Damn. It's pretty good. This is a great character for resurrection. Just to revive characters from the battlefield. Oh, damn, this is going to be a pain. Especially with all the strength type characters that you can go combine with her in a build. Oh, I'm so scary. The cast is now inflicted by Life of Overseer grants the cast. This effect lasts for two turns. Resurrection, this status lasts for the entire battle. Unsta unstackable if, if Pursuit triggers while dealing normal attack. Consumes this status and revives two enemies. The faint smile increases the healing revived amount by 35%. Unstackable lasts for three turns. Damn. This is her only this is only her ultimate. Okay, and then we got Climate Cruel Game. Oh mighty blessed. When a battle starts, grants the cast all damage reduction, two turns, and primarily immune to days. So it's saying, when a battle starts, grants the cast all damage reduction for two turns. And permanently immune to days. I think that's included for the two turns. But I think, I believe it's mean to days for the entire battle. I'm not sure. I don't know why they don't include that. Okay. Injured and slow. Oh, shit. And permanently immune. <laughs> I didn't read the whole thing. Permanently immune to days, injured and slow. I think it... Well, I think it's trying to say it's immune to those effects, those three debuffs for two turns, including damage reduction. Life Overseer, when, the when taking damage, heals all allies by 20% of Serial's max HP, triggers in the faint Serial's first three turns. Yes. So pretty much you, you just want to attack Serial right away, faint smile Serial right away. Elite defense, when taking damage f from the enemies afflicted by elite, reduces the cast damage taken amount by 50%. Uh, this character, if you have a character that takes aggro a lot, because Serial does not take aggro, aggro, so she's not a tank. She, she has effects like a tank. But there there are characters that are more tankier than her. That will take the aggro and that can take the damage. I can see her in a tank build. That's this is pretty fucking good. Should you summon <laughs> shoot you. Should you summon? Yes, definitely. But which one which one's more better? I'd say this current cereal is better than the previous cereal. And then now we got Lucifer. Sexy Xmas. Winter Lucy. Oh shit. This is going to be hot and heavy. Now we got Lucifer. All right. So Lucifer she's she's been reran through like a train and she's been on banners for like four, four previous banners I believe four or three not sure but she's been she keeps coming back if you don't have her 15 you're about to get her 15 
All right. Blink Slash, for all the new players that don't know what Lucifer's effect does, deals 160% attack as damage two times and inflicts a uh, fracture UL for two turns. Before the action grants the cast Keen, fracture UL attacks minus 50% last for two turns, can be stackable with the fracture at the same time. Keen, crit plus 35% last two turns. Then we got Void Light, Void Laser deals. 360% attack as damage, flex injured, and block heal on the targets and stuns the enemy target with the highest speed. Stun immobilizes the target and increases its damage taken for last for one turn. Injured healing received minus 8% last for three turns. Block heal unable to gain any healing effects until the effect wears off last for one turn. If you're if you're listening to right now. <laughs> Lucifer's fucking pop busted. Not busted like broken right now. There are characters that can counter her. But she's she's pretty good. She's really good. You can never go wrong with the original Lucifer of Pride. Now Fallen Glory, her ultimate deals 470% attack as damage inflicts stun and increases the skill C D and the targets by one after an attack extends fear. Nothing affects for three turns, stun immobilizes the target, increases its damage taken for last for one turn. So, we already read the previous characters. Some characters are Lucifer can be countered. There are characters out there that can be uh, immune to stun. So, if you see someone with a Lucifer on their team, you just get a build that has stun immunity. Then we get the Supreme. Fear nothing. After an attack deals damage on the enemy with the highest HP by 180% attack has damage two times and restores 25% of the max HP of the cast. Can deal critical attack triggers during the first two, turn first two turns. Fallen Angel Arms. When the battle starts, increase the cast speed by 25%, lasts for three turns, and open a 25k shield two turns. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. So if you don't pull Winter Lucifer, you just pray, pray to Lucifer that you get Lucifer. Now Winter Lucy, sexiest version currently out. Winter, Winter Lucy, eh, it's cool, but look at this, look at this, better. Uh, attack is phenomenal. Speed is phenomenal. HP is <laughs> adequate. Yes. All right, but l let's look at this. Glory slash deals two times, deals damage two times by 140% attack as damage and inflicts. So pretty much 280% attack as damage and inflicts deterioration and fatigue on the target with the with revive block effect. <laughs> no reviving for some characters. Before the action, inflicts Iron Wrist on the cast. If the total turn is less than 25, remove all buffs from the target. <laughs> That's crazy. Iron Wrist. Attack plus 35%. Lasts for two turns. Deterioration. Healing. Re revived amount. Minus 25%. Stacks up to five times and lasts for four turns. Ah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty much fuck you to any revival characters. You ain't coming back from heaven. You ain't coming back from hell. Whatever character that dies and wherever they belong to, heaven or hell, they ain't getting revived. They're staying in heaven or hell. Now, slow dance or snow dance. Deals 385% attack as damage range to enemies with a chance of inflicting faint on the target if the target is freezed. Move gauge decreased by 50% if the total turns are less than 25. Actually, this character will go great with uh, Envy. Uh, Summer Envy. Or Leviathan, yeah. The Summer... Summer version of Leviathan. If the target is freeze, move gauge decreased by 50%. If the total turn 
Total turns is less than 25% or 25. Move gauge increased by 40% after the action. Move gauge increased by 40% after the action. If the turn, if the total turns are more than 25, grants a shield with 10,000 10k points and lasts for three turns. This is pretty good. No revive. The target will cease to be revived for four turns. Holy shit! Yeah, I, this is better than cereal. This this is a top tier character. This is like uh, this is A tier. This is an A tier character right now. Fallen Star, our ultimate, deals 480 percent attack as damage and restores the cast HP. Cast max HP by 40 percent if the if it is an odd number turn. <laughs> I love how this goes by turns. While dealing attack, deals 200%, 250% attack as damage two times on the enemy with the highest HP. Even if it's in an even number turn, while dealing damage, inflicts freeze on the target. After the, the action grants all damage reduction on the cast, freeze grants, uh, freeze cast afflicted by this effect will be immobilized and take damage over time after one turn. It's fucking amazing. This character's fucking broken currently out right now. Santa Glory. Queen of Freeze. When the battle starts, inflicts freeze on two random. Oh my god. Last for one turn. Plus, they get damaged for that one turn. Fallen Angel of Vesper version. When the battle starts, grants the cast. Last Christmas and permanently immune. Immune? Permanently immune to days and freeze. So, it, it counters itself. If there are still more than two enemies, included two survives, deal 150% attack adds damage two times on the enemies with the highest HP after the action, after the pursuit, grants the cast Vesperia and restores the cast max HP by 20%. Christmas Miracle, when the battle starts, tech type allies gains 25% attack adds damage. Last for the entire battle, unremovable. That's fucking great. So she gets an automatic 25% on top of her already attacks. It's fucking great. Freeze. Ca okay, we already know about freeze. Gets damage over time. Last for one turn. Last Christmas when the battle starts, the cast crit by increase the cast crit by 50%. Last for the entire battle, unremovable. Vesperia. Oh, oh my god, look at all these fucking stacks. Vesperia when the uh, affected by this stat. Crit damage 25% unstackable. Or stack up to 3% last for the entire battle. Fuck. Fuck, guys. Broken. New broken. Gotta get this character top tier right now. I'm gonna be summoning on this banner. You know how it is. I'm gonna get that dupe if I don't pull her. But yes, you should summon on this character. If you're deciding which one, and you're waiting for this video, this Lucifer, this Lucifer right now. Fuck cereal. I'm cereal, guys. Get Lucifer. But alright, guys. That's gonna be it for the end of the video. Sorry that it took a lot longer. I did read up on the old characters. Four new players are out there that don't know. And that are just currently joining. But other than that, thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. If you haven't already, comment down below. Are you going to be summoning on either or? Let me know what characters you're going to be summoning for. Also, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that like button. And remember, continue committing edgy sin. Alright guys, goodbye.